SwiftUI relies very heavily on a Swift power feature called Opaque Return Type, which you can see in action every time you write some view. This means one specific type that conforms to the view protocol, but we don't want to say what. Returning some view has two important differences compared to just returning view. First, we must always return the same type of view. And second, even though we don't know what view type is going back, the compiler does. The first difference is important for performance. SwiftUI needs to be able to look at the views we're showing and understand how they change, so it can correctly update the UI. If we were allowed to change views randomly, it'd be really slow for SwiftUI to figure out what exactly changed. It'd pretty much need to ditch everything and start again after every small change. The second difference is important because of the way SwiftUI builds up its data using modified content. Previously, I showed you this code. That creates a simple button, then makes it print its exact Swift type and gives some long output. The view protocol has an associated type attached to it, which is Swift's way of saying that view by itself doesn't mean anything. We need to say exactly what kind of view it is. It effectively has a hole in it. In just the same way that Swift doesn't let us say this variable is an array, and instead requires that we say what's in the array. This variable is a string array. So while it's not allowed to write a view like this, var body returns view, text hello world, it is perfectly legal to write a view like this, var body returns text. Returning view makes no sense because Swift wants to know what's inside the view. It has a big hole that must be filled. On the other hand, returning text is fine because we've filled the hole. Swift knows what the view is. Now let's return to our code from earlier. If we want to return one of those from our body property, what should we write? While you could try to figure out the exact combination of modified content generics, it's hideously painful. And the simple truth is that we don't care. It's all internal SwiftUI stuff. What some view lets us do is say, this will return one specific type of view, such as button or text, but I don't want to say what. So the hole that view has will be filled by a real view but we aren't required to write out the exact long type. Now, in case you're curious, you might wonder how SwiftUI is able to deal with something like VStack. It conforms to the view protocol, but how does it fill the what kind of content does it have hole? If it can contain lots of different things inside it. Well, if you create a VStack with two text views inside, SwiftUI silently creates a tuple view to contain those two views, a special type of view that holds exactly two views inside it. So the VStack fills the what kind of view is this with the answer, it's a tuple view containing two text views. And what if you have three text views inside the VStack? Then it's a tuple view containing three views, or four views, or eight views, or even 10 views. There is literally a version of tuple view that tracks 10 different kinds of content. And that's why SwiftUI doesn't allow more than 10 views inside a parent. There are versions of tuple view that handle two views through 10, but no more.